Hi friends, John Sowash with you. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can avoid the Google Classroom notification avalanche. If you've used Google Classroom for any length of time, you know that it sends a lot of email notifications. If you're not careful and if you don't adjust those notifications, you will quickly just learn to ignore all of them. It's just too overwhelming. Now the notifications are supposed to be helpful. They're supposed to notify you of important activity in your courses that require your attention. So I'm going to show you how to disable the notifications that are not important and leave the notifications that are important on so that you can be um, up to speed on what's going on in your class. Now, we're going to be doing this in the web version of Google Classroom. So right now I have Google Classroom open, classroom.google.com. You can do this on your laptop or on your mobile device. Could be an iPhone, iPad, Android device. There are notification rules for both email, which we will adjust through the web, and there are notification rules for your mobile device, which you will do through the mobile app for Google Classroom. You'll probably want to do this on both devices to determine how you want to receive those notifications. You can turn on email and off push notifications or the opposite. It's up to you. You can customize it however you wish. All right, let's get started. Visit classroom.google.com or go ahead and visit the uh, classroom app on your mobile device. We're going to go to the hamburger, the three lines in the top left corner. Click there and scroll all the way to the bottom where you will see settings, little gear, little fidget spinner. We're going to click on settings and this is where you'll see the notification rules. All right. The first thing you can do if you want, I don't recommend it, but if you want by disabling that switch right there, you can turn off all email notifications. If you're on your mobile device, that will turn off all push notifications. That's kind of the master switch but I don't recommend that. We're gonna be a little more selective about which notifications we want to receive. Now let's scroll down to this first section here. Now this is the commenting section and this is uh, some of the most noisy notifications. I recommend the following. First, I recommend you disable the notification for comments on your post, okay? So we're gonna turn off this one right here. So I have that switch off. Every time a student comments, you do not need an email. It's going to drive you insane. That's usually the most noisy of the notifications. Now, some of you have disabled comments for your class. And in that case, you're not going to get anything because your students can't actually comment. So I turn that one off. I don't think uh, I need a notification every single time. Um, now, down below is comments that mention you. I think it's fine to leave that one on. I don't think it gets used very often. In Google Classroom, it's possible for people to tag you in a comment. So if they you know, type the at symbol and then your email address, it would notify, it would tag you in that comment. Very similar to, to Twitter or Facebook, uh, the way you tag someone. You can leave that on. I don't typically see students using it, so I don't think that's going to be very uh, common. Now, the last one I think is the most important, and this is the one that I want you to leave on, private comments. Anytime you post an assignment to Google Classroom, a student can open that assignment and leave you a private message. Now, typically that's a special request, a, uh, a question asking for clarification about the assignment instructions. That is what you want to receive and reply to as quickly as possible. So I want to disable all the other one so that when I get a comment or get a notification in Google Classroom, I know that, hey, that was a private comment and I need to go and answer that question quickly. So I would leave that one on. That's the one I'm paying the most uh, attention to in my courses. Now let's scroll down to the next section. This is actually for students, okay? These are going to be on by default, and I would strongly encourage your students to leave them all on. So students really don't need to adjust anything. Sometimes a kid will come in here and turn them off, and that can cause issues. They're not being reminded of assignments, but I would leave them all on. Really, the important ones, in my opinion, are this one right here, the due dates, I think is very important, and then also the returned work. So anytime you grade and return an assignment, they'll receive a push or email notification. The other two might be a little noisy, uh, but I would definitely leave on uh, those two that I circled there. One quick note for teachers. 
um, for the due date. So every day, 24 hours before an assignment is due, a student will receive a reminder about that assignment. If you do not select a time when your assignment is due, so if you just schedule your assignment for, you know, it's due on April 15th, but you don't say it's due at six or three or whatever, Google assumes that that assignment is due at midnight. Now this causes an unfortunate problem because every night at 12 midnight, student phones are freaking out because all of the teacher assignments are sending out notifications. I am trying to discipline myself anytime I assign work to always attach a reasonable hour to that assignment, 6 p.m., 3 p.m., 9 p.m., so that my students' phones aren't waking them up in the middle of the night. So a little tip, um, I've heard some students complain about that, uh, that issue. The last section here is back to teachers again. Um, these are not going to be super busy, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about them. Um, first, I would strongly encourage you to turn off late submissions and resubmissions. Okay, the resubmissions is the big one, so I don't know why, but students will submit, unsubmit, resubmit, unsubmit, resubmit. They'll do that a dozen times before the due date. You do not need an email every single time uh, you receive those. Now, this does get into you know your policies for late work. Um, if you are allowing students to turn things in late, I would uh, set the policy that it is their responsibility to send you a personal email or a private comment through Google Classroom saying, hey, I'm sorry, this is late. This is why it's late. Will you still accept it? Now, even if you have late submissions off, because we've got the private comment notification on, you'll still get that and be able to respond to the student. I'm not allowing kids to just submit things late and not notify me. That's the digital equivalent of a kid after the school has closed, just like sliding their home homework under your classroom door. Like that's just not allowed. But you'll have to handle that and communicate your policy to your students. The last two are pretty um, infrequent. It's really just at the beginning of the school year. You know, if you're a co-teacher, a special education teacher or a specials teacher and you're cooperating with another instructor, um, at the beginning of the year, you'll get those notifications. Um, I don't know that I've ever had a scheduled post uh, fail. Um, so I don't even know if I've ever received that bottom one. So I, you can leave it on. It should not be uh, very common. Now we have one more section to talk about before we wrap things up. This next part is specifically for co-teachers. So again, special education, specials teachers um, who do not have your own classroom, but rather you are pushing in to the Google Classroom of um, you know, the core subject teachers. This will also apply to school administrators who have requested to be invited to classrooms just to kind of monitor and um, observe. We have the ability by going down here to class notifications to disable notifications for specific classes. So if you are a principal and you want to be in the class to observe occasionally, you certainly don't need an email every single time someone turns something in or comments or whatnot. So we're just going to go through here and for all the classes we're just kind of observing, we're going to turn those off. You'll still get into the class, you can still take a look, but you're not going to be notified. If you are a specials teacher and you, you know, post assignments once a week or every other week, you don't need notifications every single time. So go ahead and turn off uh, all of those classes. If you are a special education teacher um, and you're just assisting sp uh, specific students, you can probably turn off those notifications as well. So this allows you a lot more granular control over your notifications. The courses you teach will be governed by these up top, and the courses you're just kind of observing or supporting, uh, you can disable those as well. Now, one final reminder before we uh, end for today, you want to make sure you repeat these steps on both your mobile device and your laptop or the web. Because the settings are the same, but one governs email and the other governs the push notifications for your mobile phone. You can decide to receive the same notifications on both or customize it according to your preferences. Hopefully this has been helpful and will assist you in avoiding that Google Classroom notification avalanche.